So let's start in with a few examples. What's the probability of rolling a four on a fair die? Well, you know that there's only one four on the die and it's out of six total possibilities. So we have a probability of one out of six. This one's a little bit more interesting. So a boy has a jar of marbles. He has two yellows. So what's the probability? <laughs> a little bit of a surprise. Okay, what's the probability of drawing a red? Well, let's count. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten balls or ten marbles in total. And of those, there are three reds. So my probability has to be three out of ten total. Three reds out of ten total. And then we could change that to decimal or to a percent. What's the probability of drawing a blue? There are one, two, three, four, five blues out of 10 total. So five out of 10, which is a half or 0, 0,5. Probability of drawing one that's not red. Well, the ones that are not red, let's count. Not red, not red, not red, not red, not red, not red, not red. So that's seven out of 10. So now I want you to pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. The bag contains three red pens, four blue, and seven black pens. See if you can answer these questions. Okay, let's check your answers. The probability of choosing a red pen, well, we have, we need to figure out what our total number of pens is first. So we have three plus four plus seven. So our total number is 14 pens. Three of those are red. So the probability is three out of 14. Blues, four out of 14, which simplifies to two over seven. And black pens, 7 out of 14, which simplifies to 1 over 2. We do usually like to see them left as fractions, because otherwise you end up rounding off the two decimal places and you lose accuracy. So just leave it as a fraction as a rule. Another example, here's a spinner. Maybe you've seen this where you put the spinner on a pen. What's the probability of spinning a 2? Well, if we look here, we have one, two twos out of six total outcomes. So two out of six simplifies to one over three. Now this one's a little bit more challenging. What's the probability of spinning red? You need to, to be able to answer this question, I don't exactly know what the fraction of this spinner is that's red. So you need to actually get out your protractor for this type of question and measure the number of degrees in the red wedge. The number of degrees in the red wedge here is 120 degrees. And we know that all of the angles in a revolution add up to 300 and 60 degrees. So that means that my probability is going to be 120 over 360. And let's see what that simplifies to, 1 over 3. So if you see something like this, then you need to take out your protractor and measure. Another example where I'd like you to pause and see if you can start this one on your own. Right, we're predicting how many times we expect to roll a 1 if we're going to roll the die 900 times. So let's use our theoretical probability to find out the probability of rolling 1. The probability of 
sorry, the probability of rolling a one is equal to one out of six total outcomes. Now, if we were to roll it six times, we would expect to get it one time. So if we now roll it 900 times, then my predicted number of ones is going to be 150. So out of 900 rolls, 150 of them should be ones. If we look at the second one, if we want to know how many times should we get a number greater than two? Well, let's write out our sample space because I need to be able to visualize a number greater than two. So I have my sample space, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm gonna highlight all the numbers that are greater than two. So that's three, four, five, and six. Okay, so in this event, the probability of getting greater than two is equal to four out of six. And that simplifies to two over three. So in 900 rolls, I'd have two over three times by 900, which is gonna give me 600. So I expect to get a number greater than two 600 times. But we know that if we actually did this experiment, we might not get these numbers exactly because this is based on the theory, this is the ideal. In a real experiment, we wouldn't necessarily get that number. So at this point, you should be ready to tackle the homework. There's a file on the Google Classroom called Day 1 Probability and Notes and Exercises. And from this, you, can, you should take the notes that are there as well. They sort of overlap with what I've done here. On page 2, there are three exercises that you're going to do. And please note that on number 3, you have a spinner where you need to use your protractor to determine the degrees. I realize this might be difficult to use to do if you're trying to do it on a tablet or on your phone, but just do your very best. And if you're off by a little bit, we're not going to get too bent out of shape. On page three, you're going to do number four at the top only. At the bottom, there's a relative frequency experiment of rolling a die, which is very useful, but um, I'm not going to require that you do that. Good luck. We'll carry on tomorrow.